somebody hit the shift key for me again so we don't turn off. Okay, welcome back for the uh, B, B lecture here. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, the steps of how to go from the net list and uh, get going on lay actually laying out a board. Now, for homework we hit, we started with an 8x8 eight eight LED. Uh, that was pretty tedious. I probably should have dropped that number down. Um, I, I did 4x4. Four four. You did 4x4. Four <laughs> four. Good idea. Uh, <laughs> for this, I'm going to do a 3x3 three three because 2x2 two two is a little too small, and 3x3 three 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 is about as much as I can do, do given the limited uh, video time on this camera. So I'll show the schematic. Um, I'll show uh, the, the, the footprint binder, okay, and then um, we'll actually import the net list and do it as quickly as we can. I expect this will probably take 20, 25 minutes, so just be, be aware. Okay. Oh, uh, well, we probably need to erase that. I'll, I'll do it. You'll do it. Okay, fine. So in my repository, I have LED9, which is a 3x3. Three three. Um, and uh, thank you very much for being the board eraser. Is it okay? Or is it? So, so every once in a while, I get this message, and it's, sometimes it's telling the truth, and sometimes it's fine. This time it's telling the truth. Okay. Now we're struggling with the, six, the 800 by 600 resolution here. Okay. Um, so there it is. Okay. And I'm going to go use my mouse wheel here to zoom in on the uh, grid. And I'm going to go up here and hit refresh because it lost the line. Uh, one of the problems with KiCad and its current in incarnation is it doesn't have good, it loses things on refresh. Um, I'm hoping that eventually they're going to switch over to OpenGL so they don't have to deal with that, that silliness anymore. Um, okay, so I have four LEDs. Uh, this is, I, I didn't like the LED that came out of the uh, device library. So what I did is I used the schematic editor and um, uh, made my own, okay? I wanted one that, with a vertical orientation and I, I like to have my pin numbers be, um, you know, horizontal. So uh, I did that. I uh, used my own resistor um, and I laid them all out and then I used the annotation button to do it all. So I don't want to get over, overdue on all this. Um, then what we do is we come over here to the net button and we click that and it said, we set generate the net list. It says, where do you want it? And we, we write it out and away we go. So now we've got the net list and then we have to do the bindings. Oops, I got to click no here because in fact I already started that. So um, when, I, when I first brought this up, it had no field, uh, fields for these things labeled LED. So I'm using an 0603, which in the metric format is 1608, okay, times 80N, which is um, so it's a nominal part. And the 80 means it's 80, I think it's 0.8 millimeters high, okay. Um, 
And so I, I added those, and I also had these resistors down here and got those filled in. So once we save that out, which we just do by that, we now have an annotated net list which has the footprints and the, um, the net list in it. So now we can go to the part that is what we're all waiting for, which is this. Okay. This is KiCad, the printed circuit board layout program. Okay. Um, oh boy, I don't know what to do here. Uh, let me just go see if I can resize this a little so that we can see the other side here. Okay. Let me pull this over a little. Let me squish it down a little. Okay. So uh, this works a lot better on a bigger screen, and so this is really more of a desktop tool than anything else. So over here on the left is a bunch of um, modes. Um, because we've got such limited screen real estate, I want to be very careful not to click on the wrong buttons because some of them simply aren't showing. Um, but you can change between inches and millimeters. You can turn the grid on and off. We can't see the grid right now, so it doesn't matter, um, and stuff like that. Over here on the right is the um, various things you can do. You're going to spend most of your time dropping components and drawing lines. Okay, so you're, you know, the, you know this, these are the two modes you're going to be in. It is a modal editor. And in addition, you have the ability to turn off um, layer visibility. And we're going to leave that alone for now. Um, we're just going to leave them all on. Okay. So now, uh, we can come over here. There's some buttons across the top. Uh, we can zoom in with this. I almost never use these buttons. I do use this button, which is the refresh button. And I do use this button which is a little uh, magnifying glass with square brackets that forces it to be resized to the uh, window. Okay. Um, okay. So the most important thing we need to do is add the net list. So I'm going over here, which says .net, and it's got a little wrench on it. That's where we want to be. And we go read current net list. I think this is going to fail, and I want, I want to show you what happens when, when, when it fails. So we're going to click yes, and it actually grinds for a little. Okay. Nope, it worked. Okay, if nothing shows up, what it means is your libraries are wrong. So the, the library management in this tool is just like for the schematic editor. You have to make sure that your library footprints are in, in there. So you'll see right here I have IPC 7351 nominal in my path. Okay, if it wasn't there, I'd get a ton of error messages saying, I don't know where this footprint is and I can't draw it, so I didn't. So I just want you to know that when you get a ton of errors, that usually means you have a library configuration problem. Okay. So now that I've talked about the library stuff, we're going to go click this little thing here. And you'll see that we've got all these white lines pointing down to a little red blob here. Boy, I, I bet you the people on the camera you can't even see it. Okay. Um, so let's go zoom in a little. So what that is, this is weird, is KiCad puts all of the parts on top of one another if it doesn't know where they're placed. Okay. Those white lines are called the rat's nest, and they're to show wh which, which leads should be connected to which other leads. Okay. So um, that is what they do. Um, I personally would have probably come up with some little gridding algorithm to sort of spread them out a little so you could see them all, but that's not what they did. They say you're going to have to move them all anyhow, so, but uh, what can I say? 
Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go grab them all. Okay, and this is the real reason why I went down to the three by three is because it just takes too long to move, you know, uh, 64 diodes and eight resistors. So I right click on this. The, the footprint on top is the di first diode, and we're going to go click move. So there it is. And then I can use the keyboard <coughs> to do things like rotate it. So I'm rotating it uh, three times and putting it right, say, there. And we're going to do this as quickly as I can. And I'm not going to be uh, really pretty on, on this um, because I don't want to take too much time. So those are the first three diodes. Spread them out a little. Using the mouse, you can actually do the keyboard. Let me show, show you what happens when you use the M key to move this. It just grabs it. And in general, oops, um, you want to use the keyboard to help you out here. The mouse is not the most efficient way to do all this. So I'm just typing M, three R's, M, three R's to rotate three times. M, three R's, and then M, three R's. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in on all this. And what you see is the white lines show you uh, which pads should be connected to one another. And that's called the rat's nest. Um, and um, at the, at normally, at this point in time, I would spend some time to sort of uh, turn on the grid, get the grid, grid correlation, and move all the parts so that they're absolutely lined up. I'm not going to do that, but if you're doing this, you should do that because you want your uh, a, a matrix of LEDs. You want everything to line up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw lines. Okay. Now there's. Two, there's multiple layers on the board, but we're doing a du double-sided layer. And you can use the page up and page down keys to change which color. So the uh, page up takes you to the front layer, which is red. And page down takes you to the bottom layer, which is green. Okay. And so now you can draw lines. If you go into a line uh, trace drawing mode, and your trace width is over here. They usually give you a couple of trace widths. Um, I try to do 10 mil trace widths on my PCBs. Uh, I've more recently been having to go down to 8 mils because the fine pitch parts on some of the things are, some of the leads are at most 8, eight mils, 8 thousandths of an inch wide. So I basically size my traces to be the maximum width of the, the, the part that I'm working with. Okay, let's start drawing some lines here. So here we go. I draw that line, click, click, and then if you, when you want to end it, you can either use your mouse and go end track, okay, which I'm not going to do, or you click on the end button on your keyboard and that terminates it. You'll almost always want to use the end button because it's just easier. So now, now you'll just sit there and see me knocking these things off pretty quick. I'm just going click, and then click, and okay. So I've done those four. So let's go connect these leads together. I'm going to do it in this order. And you'll notice that it don't, it's keeping the lines at 45 degrees and stuff, which is good. In general, you always want to keep your traces at vertical, horizontal, and, and um, sloped 45 degrees. 
So I've done that. So I'll click those two things. You'll notice the rat's nest line goes straight through here. So let's zoom in on it a little. And now we're going to connect this lead here. Okay. So anybody see what I've done wrong? No. Okay. I put all these lines on the back side of the board. Okay. And um, so it's all wrong. So that's good. So I'm going to go up here. And we're going to undo this. Undo, undo, undo. And we'll zoom out a little and we'll click undo again. And now I'm going to go page up and try again. Click, click, end. Click, 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 end. Click, 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 end. Click. Click, 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 click end. Come on. Okay, you, see, you, know, you notice what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to connect because I'm in such a hurry. It's saying you can't connect to that. That's not on your net. So KiCad is trying to prevent you from making mistakes. So I'm making a mistake here. There's no way out of it. I'm hitting the escape key to just cancel that line. We're going to try again. Okay, now it's go here, 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 and now I'm going to go click end, and we, we're connected. Okay. Now we want to connect this pad over here. And now I'm going to zoom in a lot so you can sort of see some of the stuff that's going on. It's trying to make for sure that we connect, and it will very frequently use one of these 45 degree lines. So I will frequently overdo it and back into it and see if I can see if I can get it straight. And then I click end. Now that's just mean the trace is perfectly good no matter how, whether or not it's got that little squiggle on the end or not. The, uh, nobody can see it, so don't overdo it. It's just me being you know, a little paranoid and you know, trying, trying to make my boards look really pretty to me. Um, it, but it doesn't matter because it's electrically the same. Okay. Um, so, uh, what are we going to do next? Well, I think we should do the, um, um, another vertical connection here because I want to show vias. Okay, now the way vias work is as follows. Let me, I'm going to start here. And you'll notice it's kind of, some, sometimes that it's not doing the right thing. And this is really important. Your forward slash key changes the orientation of the bend. You see how I'm doing it? So I'm clicking the slash key. And so if I want it to come this way out, that's the way I do it. Okay. Um, so I don't want to block things off, so I'm going to put my via up over here. And again, I can use the mouse key to drop a via somewhere on there, place via, but I never use that. I always use the V key. And you will want to use the V key as well. And I'm being very fast here to save time. So now I've connected that up. Now I have a problem. I still need to connect this one up. So how do I do that? Well, let's zoom in a little. Move this over a little. Yeah. Okay. We're going to draw a trace from there. I'm going to hit the slant key. And then I will just frequently zoom in because I really want to get the V out to sort of drop in right on top of it. And there it is. Now I've got the V connected there. Um, and I can hit end. Now what happened here is I've got a, a leftover trace. How do we get rid of leftover traces? We hit the we put the cursor over it and hit the delete key. Whoops, I deleted the whole line. Got to try again. So we go back up to the top of the page, over. I usually zoom in. I go V and end. And now it's connected. So that happens a lot in, in KiCad. You forget to, and you just, just redraw it. It's, it's fairly quick. Okay, uh, let's do this again. So I'm going to, we're not trying to, oops, 
Got to go page up again. Let's do this. Via. Over here. Another via. Connect. Page up. Over here. I usually zoom in a little. Via. End. Okay. So I've now done all the vertical and all the horizontal connections on the matrices, the LED matrix. So now what we've got to do is connect all these leads up to the um, leads of the processor. So that's what we'll do. Um, so um, what we're going to do here is uh, start on the top layer. And again, we're going to just use a via. Oops. Let's zoom in a little. And you'll see that we're always zooming in to sort of see where we're putting things. Turn that into a via. Zoom out a little. You can do this very easily with the, um, the mouse key. Zoom back in a little. And then we'll, we'll put the via there. I use the slant key to change the orientation. Put it over there. It locks in. And connected. Okay. Let's do this again. Let's zoom in. Let's drop a via. V key. Now let me show you what happens if I try and push this trace a little too close. If I try and click on it, nothing happens. Why is that? It's because I'm overlapping with the via that we just dropped you have to leave enough space to do it. Okay, and then we can do it. We'll drop another via right about there, I guess. Drop it down. In. So I'm zooming around, doing all this stuff. Let's do it again. And the other thing to notice is this is a surface mount. I can run these traces right underneath the surface mount things, no problems. Now, in through hole things, you can't do that. Through, using through hole design rules, you cannot do that. But for this one, you can. Now, do I have enough space here? I think I might. Yes, I do. So we only have three more wires to go. And. No, we've got more than three wires. So I need to connect the resistors. And uh, I need to connect this one up so I can do that using, and I'm hitting the slash key to change the orientation. And Do this one. And now let's add these ones. Whoops, rolled the wrong way. So, um, and usually what I do is I just, I don't try and get uh, too efficient at first. I just start drawing. Um, Let's see what, this is the one on the bottom. These lines are all going to cross one another, so I might as well do the via here. Via, via. Zoom in. Okay, let's do another one. Via, bring it up there. Come on in. And, nope, it's not taking. So what's going on here is there's something wrong with my 
connection. Let's see what we got here. So I'm supposed to be on, but let me zoom in here. You'll see this, the thing, that's the net that I'm on, I'm on network 22. So I need to connect this thing to pin with the network 22 on it. And I'm not seeing that. Okay, that means I've got something totally wrong. Let's try again. I grabbed the wrong lead. That's what happens when you rush. Drop this via here. And come on. There's another key I push, which is backspace, which basically says you know, undo that last line up, trace operation you did. There we go. And then we'll do this one. going to not do bother with going over. Okay. Fine. Um, a little tedious, but that's the way it is. And then what happens is after you've drawn all your traces in there, you can run your design rule check, which goes and tells you all the errors you've got. I probably should have left one wire unconnected so you could have seen what an error looks like, but I didn't. The other thing you can do is after you run design rule check, it's done something called a fill. And I'm really reluctant to t turn the fill on because we won't be able to turn it off. Because the screen is too small here. So I'll turn the fill on at the, end, at the very end. But it basically, it pours copper all over all of the board and makes a nice ground plane on top and bottom for everything that it can. Okay, the other thing you get to do is after you've drawn all these things, sometimes you go like, ah, that wire is not in the right place. So let's move a wire to this wire. What you can do is you can grab a single segment of it and move it. So we're going to go... I've popped out of draw mode. Okay. Let's just see if I can. I used the D key. I don't know why the mouse, the mouse menu wasn't showing. So you notice I'm dragging this um, trace and it's keeping the orientation up and down. Now when I come over here, I've crossed. If I try and click end, it says I'm not happy. In fact, it even leaves behind some stuff. But over here, it's happy. And uh, we hit refresh to refresh it. I don't know what just happened. You can always fix things up. So that's, that's kind of how you move traces around. And you spend... Uh, depending upon how tight your board is, you can spend a lot of time moving traces around. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to, you know, I haven't shown you running power because this particular addition to the board doesn't show power, but there's another trace width here, which is 20 mils, which is the power trace. And so you can draw fat traces. So let me go 20, 20 mils, and I'll just show you what happens when you're doing it. Just, just a fatter wire. So you can control your line widths. And so if you have a really tight layout, you, you have to move things around, move parts, move wires. Uh, it's a little tedious. I, I view it as a puzzle, and I actually kind of enjoy it. OK. Um, that is basically as much as I wanted to show you. Is I wanted to show you drawing traces and all of that. 
so you can start working on laying out your own board. When you're all done, you go here to File, um, Save or Save, and it, it goes. You could also click on that, that little thing with the blue arrow pointing down to it. You can't see it on the video. That is basically all I wanted to say here, so I'm going to go hit the pause button.